Another season, another manager. The summer of 99 saw the arrival of John Barnes. At this time, the club began to recognise and exploit Larson's off-the-pitch yeah. value. Bring your left hand up to the top. That's better, yeah. But then, in October that year... He was actually chasing the left back all the way down. I just remember Henry getting kicked. I don't think it was a malicious tackle. When I looked up, you could see the, the shape of Henry's leg. I just wanted to look away and feel, feel sick. Celtic striker Henrik Larsson will undergo surgery tomorrow on the left leg he broke in a horrific incident during last night's UEFA Cup tie against Lyon. I heard something like click and then when I rolled over I saw it was uh, broken. At the time I'm much more concerned with, with trying to get a result. He was really calm at the time which was surprising and uh, must have been a hell of a lot of pain. Uh, I know I would have been screaming. It's not until after the game and you realise he's broken his leg, he's out. For a while, so obviously the sympathy towards Henrik, but more importantly, from my point of view, I realised that we didn't really have a chance against Rangers that year without Henrik Larsson. You just couldn't replace him. The season, in terms of us trying to win the league, was gone. Without Larsson, Celtic not only struggled to compete with Rangers, but also suffered the ignominy of being eliminated from the Scottish Cup by Inverness Caledonian Thistle in February 2000. The decision taken to terminate the contracts of John Barnes and Eric Black is in the best interests of Celtic Football Club. On the pitch, Larson made his comeback in a 2-0 victory over Dundee United in May that year. And against the odds, he won his race to be selected for Sweden's Euro 2000 squad. After he broke his leg, he, he developed as a footballer. And when we saw him in the training camp, and we played a friendly that he, he was qualified. Of course, he's a big, big star uh, in all Europe, in all the world. And of course, for a Swede to have Henrik in the national team or not, it's a big, big difference. The striker returned to Celtic Park, where Martin O'Neill had assumed the manager's position. The club's fourth appointment in three years. I will do everything I possibly can to bring some success here to the football. With the famous dreadlocks now confined to a barber's bin in the city, Larson smashed Charlie Nicholas's post-war record of 48 goals in a season. Celtic were unstoppable, winning the CIS Cup, reclaiming the SPL title and the Scottish Cup to complete the treble for the first time in 32 years. Bounced back as if he'd, he'd never been injured and you know, came back strong and he was fantastic. He's a mentally strong character uh, in everything he does. He's got a will to win. It uh, doesn't matter if he's playing football or golf or pool or anything. He's, he's determined and he was determined to come back strong and he did. It's Henry Larson. With 53 goals to his name that season, Larson collected the coveted European Golden Shoe Award. Can you believe you did that? No, not really. You need a little bit of luck as well. And uh, good teammates as well, so I'm pleased with that. Even when he got the golden show for being the best scorer in Europe, uh, people wonder who is Hendrik Larsson. But you can go today, you can go around in Europe, and they know. He has told them who he is. Henrik Larsson, Leonard Johansson, thank you very much thank indeed. Absolutely fantastic achievement, which great credit to Cheryl as well. And, uh, but I'm sure he looks probably back and that winning that thing has been a great thing in his career. I think he was the most wanted player in, in, in Europe at a, at a certain time. For me it was still strange that he always stayed at, 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 uh, at Celtic. I was always hoping that a club, a big club in Europe, would buy him, but it never happened. That says enough about the player he, who really liked to play for Celtic. He became the highest paid player in Scotland when Martin O'Neill rewarded him with a one-year extension to his contract on a reputed £38,000 a week. And into this camera, please, guys. This one here, straight ahead. Thank yeah, you. Thank Having made his mark domestically, O'Neill was determined to put the club back on the European map. Baldi, Hartson, Guppy and Silla were recruited in the close season.
But it was Larsen who continued to grab the headlines following victories over Ajax, Porto, Rosenberg and Juventus in O'Neill's first Champions League campaign. He's always done it in big games and uh, I think that's the beauty when you're sitting in a, in a dressing room and, and looking around at you know, the, the other players. He's a player who, you, who you'd like to have in there and you know, you know if he's on top of his game, uh, we've got a great chance of, of, of getting a result. He's done it again. All of Scottish football used to be kind of down the wing to the touchline whack it over and nut it in, or cause a bit of a scramble in the goal mouth and get it in there. Whereas he brought this kind of balletic, dancey, you know, little wee tiny touches, and then boof! It was a beautiful thing to watch, and I didn't like it at first. I was a great fan of the bluter, you know? <laughs> With Larson's reputation enhancing rapidly, Sir Alex Ferguson tried to tempt him to Old Trafford. Yeah, it was teams who were interested in me, yes. But I just settled in here and I had a little rough time in Holland and I thought that uh, it's better to stay here with you and your family or settle in and just get on with it. And uh, I don't, I know it hasn't been the wrong uh, decision. The big clubs are even finding it more, uh, are finding it difficult to keep their quality players from something like supposedly an even bigger club again coming in. But I think that there was a rapport with the fans and I think that that helped immensely. And it was a matter of trying to pay him a fair day's pay for a fair day's work. He's idolised, really. I don't know if I can count one hand how many players have got that at Centre Clubs, but he's definitely got that here. He stayed in Celtic because he liked to play for the club. He is a Celtic man. We say that money talks louder than anything else, not always. I've got the impression that he loves to play in Celtic. He loves to live in Scotland. After scoring 29 league goals that season, Larsson was now expected to deliver for Sweden on the world stage. He's found Larsson, Henrik Larsson for Sweden. <laughs> Henrik Larsson doing what he does best. I think he's ranked today together with the players, uh, the best players ever in uh, Sweden. I wouldn't say he's the best, but uh, he's one of them, because Sweden had many years ago Nils Lidholm, Gunnar Nordahl, Ralf Edström, Torbjörn Nilsson, uh, Thomas Brolin. Henrik Larsson is one of them, so he's ranked absolutely in the top. Once again, Champions League football was the promised land for Celtic. But an unexpected defeat to Basel appeared to have ended their European aspirations. Just as one European campaign died, another was born. Injury denied Larsen the chance to leave his mark on Stuttgart, but Blackburn, Celta Vigo and Liverpool all succumbed to the Celtic goalmaster. Then... There was about uh, maybe about 10 minutes left in the game. We weren't playing that well particularly. Suddenly a uh, little situation developed. And you hit the ball, you try to hit it as clean as you can. It looked for, first of all, as if the chance had disappeared. The weight came off his boots, the spin seemed to take it away from the goalkeeper. And then suddenly Henrik puts it in. Fantastic feeling, and you know, that goal went in. That's a massive, massive goal for, for the club. I'll tell you what, it was an important one. It's fate that really, isn't it? Henrik's going to get into the final. Who else would score the solitary goal which propelled Celtic into their first European final in 33 years? Is that the most important goal of your career to, to date, do you think? Yeah, to date, yeah, I think so, without a doubt. His ability to, to create something out of nothing and the ability to score a goal and uh, when, when you think something's on, he'll do something different which takes people by surprise, you know, his element of surprise is uh, fantastic. An estimated 80,000 foot soldiers marched into Seville. We don't have anything to prove to, to, to anybody. Despite the heroic efforts of Larsen, his two goals, which put him over the 200 mark, simply weren't enough. Celtic's dreams were shattered by a Porto extra time winner. It's not going to be very good memories now. Uh, you come this far, you only got uh, this here in the pocket. And that's not what I came here for tonight. Henrik took it badly. I mean, you know, looking at it, he was fantastic in the final. You know, he scored two fantastic goals. And uh, 
you know, that might have made it harder for him to, to take the most, but um, you know, everybody took that badly. I thought his performance in the UEFA Cup final was absolutely outstanding. It's a shame, it's a pity that it didn't end up with victory, and I think that that would be something that uh, everyone would have cherished for a long, long time. I'm quite sure when he's old and grey, maybe have a look at that and realise that that, uh, that that was an absolutely splendid uh, personal performance. It would have been such a tragedy to go to you know, Seville and, and not get a chance to celebrate a goal, and he, he gave us two occasions. And for me personally, um, it gave me a great excuse to hug my dad. Being a West of Scotland male since I was about four years old, you know, you don't get a lot of chances to. Then four days later, arch rivals Rangers pip Celtic to the championship crown on goal difference. So despite one of their finest seasons in decades, the club finished with nothing. We gave it one hell of a to be fair. We had games, tough, tough European matches away, and we had to come back and play domestic. It were tough games as well. We had to go again, and OK, the players, they, they kept on turning it on and turning it on and producing it. And to lose the, the league by one goal was, was sore. In pre-season, Larson returned to his roots. And he didn't disappoint. Nor did he against MTK Hungary in a Champions League qualifier, in which he broke the record held by Peter Lorimer and Ian Rush for the most European goals scored by a single player for a British club. They have just got that little, that little extra second of confidence, if there's such a thing as, as, as putting confidence into seconds. Jimmy Greaves had it in abundance, a great, great player, Jimmy Greaves. Dennis Law had it in abundance. Ian Rush was a fantastic goal scorer. He just absolutely terrific. Gary Lineker scored a lot of goals, and Henrik's up there. He's up there with those players. And Larson reached other milestones. As Celtic progressed to the quarter-finals of the UEFA Cup, the Swede overtook Stevie Chalmers as the third highest scorer in the club's history and leaped past Bobby Lennox's post-war record of 167 league goals. If you've been a really great player in that year, in the year that you've played in, there's a fair chance that you'll be a great player in the years that have gone before or the years that will happen afterwards. And, um, and Henrik has been a great player in this era. No, he's a tremendous player, he's a, a nice guy as well. And he's been a great uh, success, he's been a tremendous uh, favourite in there. Because I think that the fans are not daft, they, they can see a player, they can sense, but they can sense also that people are getting 100%, they can sense the, the passion that they, they have for the club. Jinky will always be number one, but uh, Henrik, the rest are all uh, below Jinky in a kind of pyramid, you know. And, uh, and, and Henrik's right up there in the first five. Although reversing his decision never to play for Sweden again, next week's game against Seville will definitely be his last for Celtic. I have my options already where I can go and play. But if I'm going away to play somewhere, I, I need to feel it's the right move, the right thing to do, and the right team. The Spanish league remains Larson's preferred option, but he could quit professional football and return to his roots in Helsingborg where his newly constructed mansion sits waiting. He had promised me and uh, the other uh, members of the club that he will play a season or so with us, and that will be a great thing for us. I should be very surprised if he doesn't, uh, if he didn't want to go on with professional football uh, for some years more. Um, I hope he will, because I think he will regret it. Celtic's been fantastic for me. Seven years I've been here. Um, I couldn't wish or hope that it turned out the way it had turned out. Everybody will miss Henrik. I mean, I've enjoyed my football, you know, playing with Henrik, um, you know, more than I've enjoyed playing with anybody else. He has proven that Celtic is among the big teams. In, in European football. You know, look back in years to come and see you played with Henrik Larson and when he's broke records doing this, that and the other, so it's an absolute credit. He'll be sorely and sadly missed as a guy as well as a, as, as a, 
as, as a, an astonishing football player. I think they'll, they'll still be chanting his name for years to come. Henry Clarkson for me is a model human being who happens to be a professional footballer. I think we would all have uh, wished he would have changed his mind. That it's not going to happen. We get people that love him, adore him, uh, and I think that the, 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 the same. That it's the same with him. I think he loves the place, and I think he obviously loves the, loves the people. It's going to be tough, and there's probably going to be a, f a few tears as well when we leave. But. Uh, it's, a, it's a lovely city, it's a lovely country, um, I couldn't really wish for anything more.